Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to another coded video. In today's video, we're going to be making a drawing pad or basically paint, but you know, the very basic, bare minimum functionality of paint, okay? It's going to be a simple, uh, you know, square drawing pad. Um, we're going to have a, a nice color palette from there for the user to choose from. And um, we're just going to be able to, you know, draw some squiggly lines with the cursor and just have it a nice, smooth user experience. So I hope you guys are as excited as I am for this video. And with that being said, let's just jump right into it. All right, guys, here we are in our Visual Studio um, desktop here. So let's go ahead and create a brand new project. And as always, I always like to use the uh, Windows Form app with the .NET framework. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then we're going to go ahead and name it. So let's just call it Drawing Pad. Okay. Go ahead and click Create. And let's just give it a little bit here to uh, let it, you know, warm up and just... You know, cook, cook a little bit of uh, Alfredo in the microwave, you know, um, get a pizza, get get some beer, come back and get ready for this. So here we are. And uh, right off the bat, we're going to need um, a panel. So open up your toolbox here on the left and drag and drop a panel onto the screen. All right, we want to make sure that it takes up the entire uh, width and height of the canvas, right? So um, now that we have it selected, go into its properties on the far right and uh, scroll all the way to the bottom where it says dock here. And we're gonna go ahead and click the, the drop box here and select this middle option, which should change it to fill. And you'll notice when we did that, it went ahead and it filled up the entire width of the canvas for us, so that's great. So now that we have that, um, go ahead and rename this these panels here. So we're gonna call this uh, canvas and click enter on that. And go ahead and change the back color. It's already white, but you know you can change it to whatever color you want. I'm gonna leave it as white, but I'm um, just throwing that out there as a as, a, as an option that you can use in case maybe you want a dark themed app. All right, guys. Now that we have our um, initial canvas uh, set up here, we're actually going to go back to the toolbox and grab another panel here, and this is going to be our color palette. So once you have that on the screen, go ahead and move it around a little bit. Um, change the back color of that to, uh, let's do black, because, you know, it's, it's a high contrast against this white background here. So we're going to actually move this up in the top left, and, you know, we can minimize it a little bit, because I'm thinking that we're going to have maybe eight or so colors, so let's just uh, kind of think about what eight colors might look like. And, you know, the canvas is a, is a little bit small, so we, we can bump it up in um, size a little bit here. All right, guys, now that we have uh, both of those things set up, let's go ahead and grab eight picture boxes. So right here, and these are going to be our color selectors. So if we just drag and drop onto the screen, and let's size it into a nice perfect square like this. And that's looking a little, okay, yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. So drag that up into the um, box here, and then change the back color of it to white or sorry, whatever color you want to start with. So let's start with red, okay? So we got red on here, and let's make this a teensy bit bigger. And we're just going to copy and paste it over and over again until we have eight different boxes with about the same um, width um, separating them in between. So let's do that. And then you'll notice that the right side of this is a little bit too wide, so let's just bring that in a tiny bit so that it kind of matches what we got on the left side there, just so it looks aesthetically pleasing. And it looks like still a little bit too slim because that left side there is really thin. Okay, so that almost looks right. Let me just, oh, that's for moving it. Okay, so I think that's about as, as good as we're going to get, right? So now that we have that, go ahead and select each um, box here and change the color of each one. So let's make that one orange and this one um, yellow. And we got a nice green and cyan ish color, whatever. Uh, you know, like a darker blue, which is sort of hard to see, but, you know, we know it's there. And a pink. And then, um, as always, let's just roll with a uh, 
mm, probably just a black, right? Just so that they can reset it back to, you know, the original black color, right? All right, guys, now that we have that set up, our um, in initial interface here is actually done. So what we need to do is uh, actually go ahead and rename these little tiny picture boxes real quick. So let's do a uh, red box. Okay, and not to throw out a brand, but uh, that's kind of funny that that happened. Uh, orange box. I'm going to start a rival company called Orange Box, and it's going to be better. So watch. Watch this. But, uh, yep, let's just keep it going here. My horrible jokes uh, aside. Okay, and uh, here we go. So green box. And we got, well, I, we can call this cyan box, right? Let's do that. And then this one will be blue box. Oops. Blue box. And pink box. And black box. All right, guys, now that we have our canvas set up and have all of our little uh, buttons here named properly, we're going to go ahead and double click on this black button here. And I'll create this black box click method, right? And we're actually going to use this to route all of our colors and, and other methods from those uh, color palette boxes through this method. So in order to do that, we go back to our form and we click on each box and you click the lightning symbol to access the properties. And um, in the click action, right at the top here, you want to click uh, down and then route it to the black box click, okay? So let's go ahead and do that on all these buttons. Okay, so now that that's set up, let's go ahead and go back here into the back end code. So now that we're inside of our click method here, we're going to go ahead and say picture box and call it, uh, you know, let's call it color. Set that equal to, and then we have to cast it in picture box and then the sender. Okay, so we're, we're the when it's clicked, we want to cast the sender as a picture box and then um, go ahead and set that to the color which is the color that's currently selected, right? Okay, so now that we're done with that, we're actually gonna need a few variables up at the top here. So initially we're gonna need uh, graphics and we could call it graphics. Um, go ahead and semicolon that. We're gonna need a Boolean and we're, that's gonna be in charge of keeping track of whether the mouse is moving or not. So we can just say uh, cursor moving and we can set that to false initially. We need to create a uh, pen of sorts, you know, the, the thing that's going to be drawing the lines, which is your cursor. And we're going to say pen, um, cursor pen, and just initialize that. Then we're going to need an X and Y coordinate for, uh, you know, to keep track of where we are on the canvas, right? So in order to do that, we're going to just say uh, cursor X, oops, int cursor X in int cursor y. And then we're going to set both of those equal to negative 1. All right, guys, now that we're inside of our form 1 method, we have those uh, variables declared here. We're going we're gonna to need to set this graphics variable up above equal to um, the name of our panel, which if we go back here, we select the canvas here. We called it canvas, I believe. So let's just double check. So Copy that. It's called canvas.createGraphics with an open and close bracket and a semicolon. Then right underneath it, we're going to say that the uh, cursor pen is equal to a new pen. And inside of it, we're going to actually need to set like the colors and some other stuff here. So we're going to say that initially we want it to be uh, black. And then we're going to say 5 here because this uh, this is the width, the pixel width of the cursor. And I think 5 is a decent width. But you know what? Let's maybe make it a little bit thicker and bump it up to 7. So let's just start out with that. All right, guys, now that we have that set up, go back to your form, select your panel, and go ahead and go into properties. And we're going to need to grab a few properties here and go ahead and activate them. So... The first thing that we need is to go ahead and find where it says mouse down and double click on that to create that method. And then go back to the 
uh, same spot where you just were. Find where it says mouse up and go ahead and create that method. Then one last time, go back and then create the uh, mouse move method. So now we have three different methods to uh, have our canvas have a little bit of functionality here with our cursor. All right, so to start with, inside of mouse down, we want to set moving equals to true, right? So cursor moving equals true. And that is because when the mouse is clicked down, right, we're drawing and it's moving. So when that's happening, we want to create, you know, um, the colors or, you know, the current color and draw like, you know, squiggly line or whatever the user's trying to do. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and set the X and Y coordinates. So cursor X equal to E dot X. And that's going to grab the X coordinate of the uh, mouse. And then cursor Y is equal to E dot Y, which is awesome. And now we have our mouse down method completed. All right, guys, so next up, we have our mouse up method, which means that the user is done drawing their line. And we want to set things back to how they were, right? So to start with, we're going to say that cursor moving is uh, equal to false. And then we're going to say cursor x is equal to negative 1, because that was the default value. And cursor y is equal to negative 1. Okay, so now that we have that up, um, the last thing we need to do is go ahead and configure this mouse move method. So this one's a little bit different than the other ones, but still simple overall. So we're just basically going to say that um, if the coordinates, you know, cursor x, or sorry, whoops, cursor x is not equal to negative 1, so it's, it's moved, right, um, and cursor y is also not equal to negative 1. And finally, cursor moving is equal to true. And inside of the if here, we're going to go ahead and say graphics.drawline. And first, we need to pass in a pen. And luckily, we already have a pen, right? So go ahead and say cursor pen, and then comma, new point, because we're going to be creating a brand new point here. So we're going to say cursor x and cursor y are going to be uh, our coordinates for our new point. And then finally, we're going to say e dot location is the last parameter here. So the uh, location of the mouse and you know our new point and, and the cursor all together are going to draw the line and make it you know whatever the user is doing with the mouse. And then finally, once again, we're going to go ahead and just copy this here and paste that inside of this to uh, mirror what we were doing earlier and make sure that we have it consistently um, together as the, the mouse is moving around. So one of the uh, final things that we need to do here is go up to our uh, button and click methods, you know, where they're selecting different colors. And we want to set the color of the pen equal to the, uh, the current, uh, you know, button that was selected, right? So inside of this method, we just want to go ahead and set the uh, color of the pen equal to the color of the picture box that we just selected, right? And luckily we have our color right here. So what we're gonna say is our cursor pen dot color is equal to color dot back color. So that's going to allow us to set the color of the pen right inside that method every time that a new picture box is selected. All right guys, we're just gonna do a few more um, easy things here. So click um, enter up in our form one method. Go ahead and say graphics, whoops graphics.smoothing mode is equal to system.drawing.drawing2d.smoothing mode.anti-alias, and that is it right for that one. Then we're going to click enter again, and then we're going to go ahead and um, round off the uh, corners of the line, right? So if we just started it right now, then the line would be, you know, a, a straight up kind of like a rectangle. And all the ends of it would be a super flat, you know, line kind of rectangle edge. But we want to make it nice and round so it looks like a real pen, right? So in order to do that, we need to go in here and then type cursor pen dot start cap is equal to system dot drawing dot drawing 2D dot line cap dot round. And then we're also going to say once again that the cursor pen dot end cap is equal to the exact same thing that we just said 
So this and that and this. And then with that being said, we have now rounded off the edges of our line. All right, guys, now that we've written all of this, you know, cool, fancy code back here, let's go ahead and give it a run and make sure that it works, right? So go ahead and uh, save it and click the start button up here. All right, so here we have our canvas and let's go ahead and just start drawing initially. Ooh, here we go. We got a nice squiggly line. And then let's go ahead and try, try to change the color, right? Let's change it to green. So I just selected green. And now you'll see that it's green. Let's try pink. You know, it's pink and blue. And it's awesome. You know, we have a perfectly fully functional, nice uh, drawing pad here. And to celebrate our awesome creation, we're going to go ahead and say yay, right? Yay. <laughs> and then a nice smiley face to wrap up the project completely. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I had a lot of fun in this video. I hope you did too, and I hope that you learned something today. Um, please drop a comment down below for any thoughts or suggestions, or if you even had any questions about how this works or anything about it. Um, as with any other video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, please subscribe to my channel for more content like this, and thank you guys so much for your support. We are almost at 150 subs, and I am so happy to be able to do this, and I hope one day that we can go ahead and, you know, keep climbing the sub ladder all the way up to a million. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for the support, and I will see you in the next one.